what a day! What a lovely day! Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome back once again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the newest offering from CKF Knives from Custom Knife Factory. This is the collaboration with Bob Terzola, which is the Eagle Rock. Now if you go way back in my channel about eight years ago, and I'll put a card at the very end of the video, you can see the review that I did on my original full custom Eagle Rock. And that's one of the big regrets of my knife collecting uh, life is getting myself in a situation where I needed to sell that knife. I wish, I really wish I still had it. I really wish, especially right now. Now, I've been excited about this since the day that Mike at CKF announced that these were going to be done. Kind of caught me by surprise. And when I saw the all black, I was like, yep, that's that it has to be that one. I'm gonna I'm gonna relive some old memories with this new knife. Been super excited about it. Here is the card that it comes with. It does list all of the different steels that are being offered. S90V, which is what this one is. S110V and Damasteel. Now, I haven't seen a Damasteel version yet. Um, I don't know if or when they're coming, but uh, prices on these are $640 for any of the versions in S90V. And if you get into the S110V versions, they are $740. So I would expect the Damasteel versions to be somewhere around $900. That's just purely an estimate. I have no knowledge of it whatsoever. Okay, now inside that pouch, you get your cleaning cloth and you get a bag full of extra parts. Let's see what's in here. So we've got an extra pivot with pivot hardware. So there's your barrel and the two pieces or the, the, the two uh, heads. Not sure what that screw is for. That looks like, well, it's silver, so it must be for the thumb disc because all the rest of the hardware is all blacked out. Extra set of multi row bearings. Not entirely certain what this piece is right here. I'm sure if I tore the knife apart, I'd be able to recognize it, but I don't as it stands, unless, is that, okay, so that's gonna be your lock bar insert. All right, so, wanna give a big shout out to uh, NC Blade. Doo -doo 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 -doo. There's the sticker, I knew I had it here somewhere. NC Blade is who did the importing this time around. Uh, CKF is having some issues now because of the, uh, the terrible strife on that side of the world. Because remember, CKF is Russia. So with all the things that are going on between Russia and Ukraine, um, they're having a very hard time with PayPal and I think some other... Um, payment services. So what they chose to do was go ahead and do 
100% of their sales through NC Blade instead of offering them direct like they typically would do. They would typically have their direct sales on their website from RussiaWithKnives.com, and then they would have several key dealers also selling. So this time around, no direct sales, only through NC Blade. And NC Blade was awesome. Um, there was a slight miscommunication, uh, and, and I take responsibility for that. And I got the wrong knife. I, my plan was to be the first person out here showing this knife. And I would have been because I got it four days ago, five days ago. Uh, anyway, so it arrived, but it was the wrong one. And it was a, a version that I absolutely did not want. It was the stonewashed bolsters with the red carbon fiber, which did absolutely nothing for me. Now, I wanted this version because it looks... Of the versions available today, it looks the closest to the custom that I had. And also now having seen them both in person, this is just a much, much nicer version for me personally. I just like it a lot better. Did not like that red carbon fiber. Didn't like the dirty stone wash. Um, it just, it didn't fit for my particular taste. I'm sure there's a lot of people that will love it. Okay, now, before I get into everything, let's do the TLDW. That's too long, didn't watch. For those of you with very short attention spans, and you don't want to hear every key detail about the knife, you don't want to have any background about the designer and the manufacturing and any stories that go along with it, here it is right here. My pros and cons done as quickly as humanly possible. Okay, so my pros are the fact that it is faithful to the original design, even down to the size, because the Eagle Rock is a big old girl. She is a big one. If you've owned ATCFs and other smaller, or I should say regular size models made by Bob, or done in collaborations with Bob, then this one's going to startle you when you first open it. You're going to go, oh my God, this thing is a monster. It really is quite large. Now, I've owned and still own other knives that are larger, but the way this is set up, it just, it feels longer than it really is. That's what she said. Another pro for me is the smooth action. It glides on this MRBS just glides. It takes no effort whatsoever to get it to open or close. And it is a controlled, nearly hydraulic drop shut. It doesn't drop shut like a guillotine, like it's going to take your finger off. It is very, very smooth. Very, very well done. And of course, another pro for me is uh, Bob's pocket clip. There have been collaborations done with Bob where they, they either just didn't do his clip at all or they didn't do it very well. This is done almost just like the custom. And uh, ProTech also did an amazing job on the ATCF automatic with that pocket clip. CKF did a great job on these. It looks good. And uh, some people may not like that it kind of feels like it's a billboard on the side, but it's the Terzuola name. So why wouldn't you want that? That's, that's what I want sticking out of my I'd rather have that sticking out of my pocket than a big flashy piece of Mokutai or Timascus. I think that speaks volumes for the taste that, of the individual that has that hanging out of their pocket. Here we see it's nicely centered. Let's take a look at the lockup. Lockup is good. Now, I've only had this in my possession for a few hours, uh, about five hours now at this point. I've been carrying it the whole time and fidgeting with it, playing with it, photographing it, all that kind of good stuff. And unfortunately, there are some cons to get to, and that's where I'm heading right now. And I was, boy, I just, I didn't think I would ever see the day when a custom knife factory knife would have any sort of issues whatsoever. 
But I guess that is today's new world where you just expect the unexpected. All right, here's the thing that I can't figure out. Why the blade will not stay centered. As you can see, the blade is perfectly centered. Everything's fine. But if I go to apply pressure on the thumb disc to open it, pushing it sideways a little bit, that's just what happens. That blade rubs on the inside of this liner, and that's going to result in a very scratched up blade in short order. And that's really disappointing for a knife that you want to maintain and you want it to look as new for as long as possible. But it just, it is what it is. Ah, uh, okay. My assumption is that the pivot barrel is not, or the holes in the frame and the holes in the, the blade are not the right size for the pivot barrel. They're a little bit oversized for the pivot barrel, and that's allowing it to move. What's weird is if I have it in the open position, I release the lock so the lock isn't doing anything to hold it in place. The pivot is nice and strong. There is no movement side to side whatsoever. It only happens when it's closed. Yeah, that's not good. So unfortunately, you're left really on this knife with only flipping it. And normally that wouldn't be a bad thing, except there's a problem with the flipping. The act of flipping is just fine. The action is fantastic. As I mentioned before, the detent is perfect. It's nice and smooth on the MRBS. However, it's this section right back here and that sharp corner on the inside of each of the titanium liners. What happens is when you're going to flip this, and I can't do it without the blade coming out and then hitting my backdrop, your finger automatically follows through and it goes straight down into here and slides back. And what happens is it tears your friggin' skin up because the insides of the titanium are actually sharp and it sucks. It feels horrible. The best I can do is if I'm consciously thinking of it, I'll hold the knife a little bit differently, which I don't want to have to change my hand hold on a knife ever for any reason. And I, and I hit it sideways where my finger, again, I can't do it without hitting this backdrop where my finger sliding this way. So when it does that, it's not going down inside that channel. It's just floating up and over this. I don't like having to completely change my grip and adjust for the individual knife. You should never really have to do that. Here, you can hear it scraping. So it's, do I scratch up my blade or do I keep tearing up my finger? Those are your two choices when you go to deploy this knife. And I can't say how unbelievably disappointed I am because this was going to be my emotional replacement for the custom that I had sold so many years ago and have regretted ever since. Because everything about this knife is amazing. It's a good big size. It feels really, really good in the hand. The ergonomics are fantastic. The edge is nice. The, the blade finish is nice. All of the materials are great. It looks good. It feels good. This is a knife that you not only want to have in your collection, but you want to play with. You want to sit there and, and fidget and open and close and open and close because the action is so satisfying. It's such a gratifying experience. But when it's fucking painful, that's a bit ridiculous. I mean, look at that. You can, you can see where it's broken the skin. And that's just not something that should happen. And I don't really have delicate fingers 
after the the years that I've been knife making, um, they're I'm <laughs> almost insensitive to temperature and everything else, and uh, for it to actually cut through my skin like that, it's just ridiculous. I'm wondering if that side-to-side -side play is just because of the length of the blade. It's not something that I remember experiencing with any other knife I've ever owned, no matter how long the, the length was of the blade. And it's not something that I recall from having on my Eagle Rock either, which would have been the same blade length. Truly bizarre. Absolutely, truly bizarre. And it's, it's, I think it only bothers me more because CKF historically is nothing short of perfect. Every knife they've made has been fantastic quality, great build quality, great finishes, everything all the way around. You never really could sit there and pick apart one of their knives and go, this was made incorrectly, that was done incorrectly, this is wrong, that's wrong. You couldn't do it. So to sit here and, and see these two very prominent issues in this knife to the point where you almost don't ever want to open the knife, that's bad. That's terrible. Because that takes away not only your enjoyment of the knife, but the basic functionality of the knife. I need to be able to open the blade. Period. It's just that simple. So that's going to be it for my cons. I think they're rather significant, unfortunately. Um, and, and again, I, I can't tell you how sad that makes me feel because this was this was the knife that I was the most excited about. And this may have ended up being my knife of the year because just I love the design. I love how it feels. I love what it represents. This is not an EDC knife. This is not a tool. This is an oh shit secondary or third or fourth backup for self-defense. That's exactly what it was made for. It is made to cut and slice. It is made to pierce. It has all the strength at the tip to do so. It's designed specifically to do damage if it's required. I just love the knife. I, I it's, it's, it's like going back to your ex, you know, you know, it's the worst idea in the world. You know, the problems that were there, but your, your mind is clouded at the moment that you're making this decision again. So if I were to trade or sell this knife, I guarantee within six months, I, something would be pulling at me again to repurchase one. And my mind would be clouded. I wouldn't remember exactly why it was that it, it wasn't suitable for me in the beginning. I'm just going to see it and go, oh my God, that I love that vapor blasted CKF wash finish. I loved the zirconium. I loved the carbon fiber. I loved the size and the feel in the hand. I loved the action. Maybe I can uh, just get over the deployment issues. And I would be dumb enough to go back again. And you know that's the worst mistake that you can make. Especially because in six months, these things are probably going to double in value. So you're going to be paying out your ass to, to repurchase one. So I, I think at this point, I just need to keep it in my collection and see if I can get over the... The, the flipper tab that injures you for no reason whatsoever and or just cope with the fact that I am probably going to scratch up my blade right around here as it rubs on the liner from using the thumb disc. And these are choices that we should not have to make, period. So yeah, it's aggravating. It's it's saddening actually. As I mentioned, you know, CKF has historically just made perfect knives. 
Um, I'm excited about every, every time they release a new model, I'm always excited because there's always going to be something cool. There's always going to be something cool. There's always going to be something exciting. It's going to have great materials. It's going to have great build quality. It's going to have an amazing action. It's going to be everything that I want it to be, which is why four years ago, um, Mike and I entered into a collaborative agreement to bring my little finger fixed blade into the modern era and make it into a flipper, a production flipper. So we're going to be seeing that at some point. And I would have never done that if I didn't already have incredible faith in the brand, in the quality that they produce. And yeah, that's been a very, 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 very long time coming. And the only reason I can say it's coming now is because I just messaged Mike the other day and said, hey, you know, so what's going on with the, the Little Finger Project? Everything okay? And I was kind of expecting to hear back, oh, no, we're, we, we took on these other projects and uh, we're going to get those out first or there was uh, an issue with this or an issue with that. And instead, the response I got was they're, they're already in production. Got 200 pieces being made right now. So that's awesome. That's fantastic. I'm glad to hear that. I just hope it's not the the same crew that that made these because something's different here. I don't know if it's a different factory, if it's a, if it's different people. Something with this knife, little mistakes that were made that should have never slipped through, that have never slipped through in the past. The other thing that I really like is the carbon fiber choice here. Uh, I know a lot of people are going to call it marbled carbon fiber. It most certainly is not a marbled carbon fiber. There's a distinct difference here. And the biggest difference that you'll notice when it's in your hand is that you can feel a texture. You can feel the pattern. It's not smooth. I like that feeling. I think that's really interesting and very unique. All right, let's get into the specs for those that are spec hungry. You are looking at an overall length of nine and three quarter inches. That's right. It is nearly 10 inches. It is a big, beefy boy. Titanium frame with carbon fiber scales. Uh, I do believe, if I'm not mistaken, that this might be um, camo carbon scales. Camo carbon has a Damascus-like pattern that they offer in their carbon fiber. And it's reminding me of this, so it very well could be that. I'm not sure who makes it, but that's my assumption. And then you have over atop the bolster area, you have zirconium bolster plates, bolster covers, Damascus pivot collars, multi-row bearing system, and the weight is 6.6 .6 ounces. I'm actually glad that they did a Zerk option on this because I spent my entire video on my original custom assuming my knife was zirconium because back then, that was a long time ago, back then the only time I ever saw any blackened materials was on the very rare occasion where somebody did blackened titanium. It was, I think only a handful of people really knew how to do it consistently. Um... So when you saw a black metal like this, it was zirconium. And zirconium was really, really, really big back then as well. I was collecting a lot of zirconium knives. And it turns out it was not zirconium back then. Uh, that was a material called cermet, which is a, a combination of ceramics and metals, which I believe the metal in that case that Bob had used would have been titanium. And that gives a nice, rich, black look, just like this matte zirconium does. And I just didn't have any experience with that material. Didn't even know it existed until I started doing research for that video. And then I'm like, yeah, but this is, this is definitely zirconium. And, well, Bob was kind enough to not correct me and make me feel foolish in the process. I thought that was pretty nice. All right. 
Let's talk for a minute about the Eagle Rock story. This is something that I regret that I had not asked Bob back when I had gotten the custom. So I sent him a message a few days ago, and I said, Bob, is there a story behind the name Eagle Rock? I'm like, because I just, I, I, I don't see where the name comes from. I don't see it listed anywhere, and it's not making an immediate logical connection for me looking at the design. Like, it doesn't look like, you know, anything that would relate to the name Eagle Rock. And he says, uh, he responded back very, very quickly, actually. He says, when I married Susie, we bought our very first house together in Albuquerque. The name of our street that our house was on was Eagle Rock. The house was big. My shop was huge. So I had made a big knife to commemorate these big life changes. So this was something that commemorated a an important event in Bob's life. And I think that's a really cool story to have behind the knife. I love when designs have stories behind them or a reason for being, a reason for existing. And yeah, if you've owned an ATCF, which is a similar overall look, and you pick up an Eagle Rock, you're going to go, oh my God, this thing is ginormous. It is huge in comparison. Just scrape up my blade a little more. I, I can, words cannot express how disappointed I am in the fact that I know that I either have to cut my fingers open or I have to damage the finish of my blade in order to actually use my knife. To me, that's beyond heartbreaking on this particular knife because I was so excited about it and I'm so in love with every other aspect of it. So it's hard to say if somebody were to come up to me and say, hey, that Eagle Rock by CKF, should I get one or not? It's hard for me to just say yes or say no, because even though I know the flaws that I have with my particular example, I still reach for it and I pick it up and I flip it and I play with it and I admire it and I hold it in my hand and go, this feels so right. But when I am flipping it open, when I am deploying it, I am instantly reminded of the two things that are just rubbing me raw, literally and figuratively. It's something that I hope I can get over mentally. I shouldn't have to, though, and that's the point. I should be able to deploy my knife in whatever methods are available to me on the knife as it was designed. So, yeah, that's, that's just a darn shame. But just look at how gorgeous this is. And that grind, which looks like it might have been hand ground. Because I'm looking right back here at where the plunge for the second grind would be. And that little bit of a smiley where it looks like they kind of, you know, backed into it. And then maybe kind of just rocked it back and forth a little bit on the edge of that wheel or on the edge of that platen. Is this a flat grind or is it a hollow grind? No, it's a flat grind. So backing into that grind, once they've established that plunge and established where this grind is going to terminate and where this one's going to begin, I could definitely see them backing into that. So that's what leads me to believe that maybe these were hand ground and not machine ground because if a CNC had done this, I don't believe that you would be seeing the plunge in, in, in this exact same manner. And if they were hand ground, even more kudos to them because the symmetry on this is pretty fantastic. Not fantastic on the plunges back here. This is definitely, um, this was definitely somebody that was left hand dominant. It's still good. It still looks great. Um, this is not something that I would generally knock anybody off for because, you know what, plunges are friggin' hard. Not only is it hard to make sure that they, they are perfectly symmetrical in the distance that they go back on, on the blade, but also 
how quickly you're cutting in and sweeping into the bevel. So you can see this one here, they applied a little more pressure and got in there just a little bit better on that side than they did here. Here with a little bit less pressure and then more gentle gliding gave a more gentle sweep into that bevel. So yeah, there's a very, very, very good chance that these were hand ground and that's not something that I would have expected, especially at this price. This knife in these materials, if it were hand ground, should never be expected anywhere near this price. So uh, good job on that. All right, them's my thoughts on the knife. Thank you guys as always for watching. And I'll see you on the next video.